Setting your rates as a freelancer can be downright daunting. Price too high, potential clients might hire someone cheaper. And you price too low and you could end up feeling overworked and undervalued. Take it from me. But I have four basic steps to help you go through any time you have to set your rate or reset your rates. Step one, Google it. Seriously, look it up. Search for other people and businesses in your field or niche because many freelancers and companies nowadays post their rates on their websites. Now, when you do that, don't forget to check their experience too. Perhaps the average rate for a service from your expert in your field with 20 years of experience is X amount. But if you're less experienced, then you know you need to start out with a slightly lower rate. Or if you are experienced and you see that big companies are able to provide your same service for a very cheap rate, don't feel discouraged at all. Just figure out how you can specialize and then capitalize on a niche where your expertise will be a strong selling point to potential clients. Now this whole process will give you a realistic idea of what the going rate is or the range is for your services. Step two, factor in your needs because every freelancer's situation is different and unique. So it's crucial to understand your particular needs. First, you need to know what your monthly expenses are. These can include things like your rent, your mortgage, childcare, car insurance, health insurance, technology, and software needs, just to name a few. And of course your daily Starbucks. Will your hourly rate provide a livable, wa livable wage oof, based on those needs? AKA, how many hours can you realistically work? And you also have to take into account non-billable things that you'll end up doing for your business inevitably, like marketing, uh, invoice, sending invoices to people, uh, researching or learning new skills for your business, working on your website, posting stuff to your social media, um, reaching out and pitching clients. All of these things are not billable and they eat up a lot of time. I probably spend anywhere from five to 15 hours a week working on non-billable stuff. So you've got to take all that time into account. How much time are you willing to work? How, how much time can you realistically work before burning out? Don't forget about taxes. Oh, taxes. You definitely have to factor in self-employment taxes into this equation as well, because you might charge $30 an hour for your service, but you're actually only making $21 after you put away 30% for Uncle Sam. Now, my favorite part of being a freelancer is that I have total control over my own professional development. So once you've set your rate, you can immediately start preparing for future rate increases. What I want you to do is to make a list of your current skills and experience. Then I want you to look at that list that you've just made and see if there's anything that you can specialize in within that subcategory. Is there anything you can niche in? And I'll give you an example. When I started working as a VA in 2012, I offered general services. So I did general type things that were un niched, if you will, including calendar management and travel management. So I started simply booking flights for people, asking them that where they needed to be for work and then doing the flights, the hotels, car services, etc. I eventually started looking at travel services and I asked myself how I could make that a more premium service so I could charge a higher rate. And eventually I landed on high end luxury travel for C-suite executives. It is now one of my most popular services that I offer and it's one of my highest rated services, meaning I charge the most amount of money for it because it goes beyond just booking somebody from A to B. If you are interested in high end travel services, I have a whole four hour masterclass all about it, but it is in demand because it's time consuming and executives don't want to plan. They just want to land somewhere and feel rested and ready to roll. So a short exercise like that can really help you see where you can set higher rates. And then once you do identify where you can make improvements, find places to learn those skills. You can watch YouTube videos, take webinars. I watch YouTube videos almost every day during my lunch break. Even if it's five minutes here and there, it really adds up and it definitely can help you balance your work with learning new skills. Now rates are not set in stone. So as you continue to master new skills and grow your portfolio or even add services, you should definitely increase the price of your services accordingly. After all, if you don't ask for it, how are you going to get a raise? A long-term client once said to me, I couldn't have done this without you. We should be paying you more. 
I had a serious light bulb moment because I realized that the only reason they weren't paying me more is because I never raised my rates. I had been working with them for one calendar year and even though my skills improved, I hadn't actually changed my rate to reflect that. Hot tip, know your worth. Once you've set your rates, be confident in your work and don't let anyone else tell you that you're not worth it. You will find clients who value your work and your expertise. Sometimes saying no to one bad client in the moment allows you to say yes to better clients in the future. Oh, finally, I want to end this video with an old tale about Henry Ford. So there was once a story about the time Henry Ford hired a mechanic to fix one of his engines and the mechanic came in and simply replaced one of the nuts that had come loose for $100. As the story goes, when Henry got the bill, he was furious, not really understanding how one nut could cost a hundred bucks. So the mechanic submitted a new invoice where he listed $1 for the nut and $99 of, for quote, knowing where to put it. So there will always be people that try to discount your work or ask you for discounts. Don't be offended. Just be professional be polite, politely decline, you know your worth and keep on hustling. I swear to God, every time I try to film, somebody starts cutting their lawn or a neighbor starts yelling at a dog.